these messages for the next year will be what we call upper room disclosure. Jesus is about to die within 24 hours. He is through talking to the multitude. He is spending his precious time with the 12. And he's telling from his heart what was vital, what was important. He taught them for three and a half years. But now it is just like a, like a teacher. Before the exam, he said, look here, this is what important. And so this is what Jesus is talking to the 12 disciples before he dies next day, noon. All right? I'm going to read one scripture, then I'm going to back up read some more. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, Jesus knew that his hour was come. How did he know his hour had come? All right. Go one chapter back. That is 12. John 12, verse 20. How did Jesus know his hour had come? Verse 20, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Meaning they said, look here, we want to see Jesus. Philip came and tell Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip came to Jesus. The Greeks came to Philip. Philip came to Andrew. And both of them came to Jesus. Verse 23. And Jesus answered. The hour is come. That the Son of Man should be glorified. Go ahead and have your seats, please. What triggered this? What triggered this knowing about Jesus? What triggered this? As we study the book of John. Remember in the beginning, John's second chapter, verse 4. John 2, verse 4, when Mary came to Jesus and said, Jesus, they, meaning the wedding party, they have no wine. They ran out. And Jesus looked at her and said, ma'am, I know the King James translated woman, but he's just like we say respectfully, ma'am. He said, ma'am, my hour is not here. Wait a minute. So what happens between John the second chapter and John the 13th chapter? In a second chapter, my hour is not. In a 13th chapter, knowing his hour has come, what happened? As you read in John 7.30, see like I always say, study the word. Don't just read over his hour knowing his time had come. No, 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 no. John 7.30, John 7.30, he preached. All the guys got upset. They always wanted to kill Jesus. Huh? And the Bible says, he just walked away. Meaning, because his hour had not yet come. You are looking at me like, I'm going to connect the dots here in a minute. So just, just hold on. Jesus said, nobody can kill me. 
Come on, folks. You have read John 3? Huh? Nobody can kill me. He said, I, my own self, I lay down my life for you. You can't kill me. There was a time when there was a miracle. People got so excited, they wanted to make him a king. And Bible said, he just slipped away. One day they got so angry and they wanted to throw him off the cliff. They said, you can't throw me away. I got to lay down my life. You remember in Luke the fourth chapter, Matthew the fourth chapter, the devil takes him over the mount, uh, uh, on the temple and says, throw yourself down, kill yourself. And Jesus said, what's wrong with this fool? <laughs> you can't kill me. You cannot kill me. You, I must lay down, but I cannot lay down when I get ready. Because you have to go back to Daniel. Daniel the ninth chapter. When he talks about from this time to the captivity will be 70 years. From that time to this time. And then he said from this time till Messiah is crucified. It be this time. So he had to die according to the hour and time which God has set. All I got to say is this. If Jesus did everything according to the time of God, how come we don't move with the time of God? God said the service starts at 11. Why we walk in at 11.15? When the Bible fellowship starts at 10 o'clock, Oh, look here, look here. Don't mess up my Sunday. What kind of ignorant argument is that? Am I messing up your Sunday when I'm preparing you to go to heaven? How dare you accuse me of messing up, messing up your Sunday when I'm trying to prepare you to go to heaven? Raggedy people can't go to heaven. Did I call you raggedy? That's what you heard. <laughs> My favorite scripture. What is it? Psalm 31, 15. My times are in your hands, O God. Jesus knew his time was in the hands of God. Ma, my time is not here. Sadducees, Pharisees, you can't kill me. Crowd, you cannot make me a king. My time is not here. So what happened? They triggered this, knowing the hour is here. Wow. John 1 and 12 and 13, 14 says he came to his own. But his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God. Now watch it. God told to Abraham. He said, in thee, all the nations of the world will be blessed. And so the Jews draw a circle and say, boom, be, ah, only the Jews. Outsider. In the Luke, the first chapter, Bible says, and the angels of the Lord were shouting, singing, peace on earth. Goodwill. To the Jews, no. Goodwill to all people. So he knew. Daniel says he will die for the whole world. John 3, 16, for God so loved the whole world. Jesus said, I am going to die. But let me see my time coming closer. He knew 
Remember John 1, John 3? He said, Behold the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. All right? So here is Passover. And he was going to die as a Passover lamb. You follow what I'm saying? So he's getting closer. He's getting closer. But what happened here? Let's just read. That's all I'm going to teach today. How did he know? All right, go back to 12, John 12, 23. Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serves me, let him follow me. Look here. We have thought that follow me about going to heaven. He ain't talking about that. Follow me, meaning I'm telling you, is you willing to die like I'm about to die? See, that's our problem. We preach the gospel, come to Jesus. And you be out from the ghetto and you be in a mansion. Put to Jesus, Lord, we bless you. I will never be sick in my life. I will never be broke again. And that's the gospel we preach. And Jesus ain't talking there. He, he just told you, a corn of wheat will follow the ground. It will die. Anyone want to follow me? What we're still talking about? Talking about dying. Lose your life. But nobody want to die. All right. You want to live. But you cannot live without dying. That's what Paul said. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. But I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How did Jesus know? So now. Let me read this. Now is my soul trouble. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause, I came unto this hour. Wow. His human side. Mm, if you can help me, save me for this hour. What hour was he talking about? At noon. When the sun refused to shine. The darkness covered the whole earth. When he was stretched wide. For you and me. That hour. He said I don't want to go. But then he said whoops. For this hour. For this hour. I came into this hour. We always say, hey, why did Jesus come? He came to save and to sick. Nothing wrong with this thing. But how can he save and sick until he stretched out? Amen. For this hour, I came. I was born for this hour. Rejected, abused, betrayed, lied about. Walked out on him. But he said, Lord, for this hour I had come. Knowing it is getting closer. How did he know it was getting closer when the Greeks, Gentiles, came? He said, you know what? We want to see you, Jesus. So Jews drew a circle. And Jesus drew a bigger circle. There is no Jews. There is no Gentiles. For this purpose, he came. Let's keep reading. Verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. My God, 
When was the last time you heard a message on this? Hello? We always hear. And Jesus, when he came out from the water. Come on, folks. You, you, you remember this. When he came out from the water. We preach this. Matthew 3, 17. And there came a voice. The father spoke, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Wow. We preach that. In the beginning of the ministry. When he knew his hour had not come. In between, as he gets closer, Bible says in the Luke the ninth chapter. Uh, by the way, those who are students of the Bible, uh, the, the Lord spoke openly three times in the life of Jesus. Hmm. In the beginning of the ministry, this is my beloved son. John the Baptist said, and the Lord revealed to me upon whom you will see the Spirit of God descending, sitting upon him. He is the Lamb of God. And he put him in the water. He came out. The Spirit of God descended upon him, sat upon him. And heaven opened up. And the Lord said, this is my beloved son. This is in the beginning before the ministry started. The hour is there. He's here. Miracles. Life goes on. Look the ninth chapter. About closer to the hour. But not all the way. He called his disciples. He took. John and James. And Peter. On the Mount of Transfiguration. We are in Luke the ninth chapter. Verse 35. Bible says. And as he prayed. Listen to me. Glory didn't come from above. That's our problem. We are preaching in the last days. Glory clouds will come. Hold up. Time out. Bible says, he, as he prayed, the glory that was shut up inside. Bible say he started shining from inside out. Our problem is this. We don't want to do nothing. We don't want to pray all night long. And we just sit here like a lazy bum. And waiting on God. God show up with your glory. You. You. Oh God Lord help us. You don't want to die like a wheat. Don't want to die like a corn. But you want to just sit here. Doing your own thing. I'm waiting for the glory cloud. Child, you're going to die and I'm going to bury you without the glory cloud. Come on now, preacher. He spoke in the beginning. And about closer to the end. This is. My beloved son. And then he said, hear him. Why did he say hear him? What was going on? Please study the word. Bible says, and he was shining brighter. There appears Moses. The law. And the prophets. And they were talking. Have you ever wondered what they were talking? If you read it, it will tell you. Our problem is that we don't read. Read it. Look the ninth chapter. And they were talking. I'm in a new living translation. And said so they were talking how his time will come when he will depart from this earth and ascend to heaven. Why? And these jokers are listening. Peter, James, and John, and Peter ain't listening nothing. Like some of his relatives are in the house. 
And he said, Jesus, hold up. Let us build three tabernacles. It's your fault, boy. It's your fault. One for Moses, one for Elijah, one for Jesus. And my question, fool, where do you go to sleep? <laughs> They're listening to the law and prophet about the hour. I'm still on a subject. Jesus knowing the hour has come. They're talking about the hour that coming when you will die for the sins of the whole world and then you will be crucified. You will be ascended into heaven. They are hearing it. It's woo, 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 woo. And the father said, time out. What does Hebrews say? Hebrews 1. In a diverse time, back in the days, God spoke through the law and the prophet. But now, He is speaking through his dear son. And the apostles are not listening. That's why God had to say, shut your mouth. It's not the law, not the prophet. This is my beloved son. Same one. I am well pleased. Wait a minute. He hasn't done nothing. He hasn't done nothing. And he was well pleased. Now, almost three years later, he said, this is my son. Listen to him. Our problem is this. We want to listen to everybody but the son of the living. How did he know? That our hair come. How did he know? Verse 28, John 12, 28. Father, glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. There came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. When was the last time you heard a message on that? Listen to this. Some of your relatives were there. And the people therefore that stood by heard it in saying, Oh, it's a thunder. Huh? When God speaks and with your crazy self, don't even know it is God and you say it is thunder. <laughs> you know why? They were so used to lightning and thundering and exodus. Exodus 19. It's not the thundering. In the last days. Jesus is speaking. Listen to him. And others say. Hmm, must be the angel. Huh? And Jesus answered and said. This voice came not because of me. But for your sake. Now listen. He's coming closer. He's telling you about the time, about the hour. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of the world be cast out. And if I. Come on folks. If I be lifted up from the earth. I will draw all men unto me. He's talking about. Being lifted up yeah. on the cross. Go back to John the third chapter. Jesus said, if I be lifted up as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, I will draw men unto you. Meaning what? He was talking about the cross. Yeah. He was talking about the Savior must die. Yeah. Yeah. But this joker, they want the crown without the cross. This is said signifying what death. He's telling you what hour we are talking about. This is said signifying what death he should die.
the people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abided forever. How sayest thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? See? No matter how much you break it down, they ain't going to get it. You know why? They don't want to. Read the rest of the chapter. All I am saying is, he knew the time had come. Why? The Gentiles are seeking him. The father spoke from heaven. He knew the time has come. So for next nine minutes, I'm going to make some statement to charge your thinking about time. I'm going to make some statements. Number one, God is eternal. Everlasting. Psalm 90 verse 2. Psalm 90 verse 2. From everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. So when you talk to God. About time. How are you going to talk to God. Which has no beginning or the ending. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Moses said, From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Listen to this now. Second statement. First one, God is eternal, everlasting. Second one, God lives in everlasting now. He has no past or no future. I done lost 95 percent of my class but write it down and meditate on it what I just said God lives in an everlasting now he has no past and no future meaning was he is eternal he is everlasting because when Moses had an issue Pharaoh said who is this God? I don't know him. So Moses said, uh, what am I going to tell that fool when I go back? And the Lord said, only one thing. Tell him, I am that I am. End of the story. See, we talk about time to the one who is eternal. I am that I am. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10, the Lord said, I am God, there is none like me, declaring end from the beginning. Wow. He stands here beginning in your time zone and he declares the end. He has no beginning. The moment you say, this is the beginning of God, he sees his to be God. I know this is a brain twister, but that's all right. That's why you got a whole week to study. Well, Revelation 1 and 8. What did Jesus say? I am the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending. So, and we're talking about time. My uh, rent is due on the 15th. This one will blow. Well, let me just say this. God dwells in eternity but time dwells in God. God dwells in eternity but time dwells in God. He has already lived our tomorrow and our yesterday. 
is it too is it too much is it too early god is eternal he lives in etern eternity he lives in eternal now he has no past he has no future he is god alpha omega beginning and ending god dwells in eternity but time dwells in him that's why bible say in the fullness of time jesus was born in the fullness of time he died meaning god is not ignorant of the time but the time dwells in him god dwells in eternity but time dwells in god he has already lived over tomorrow and he has already lived over yesterdays listen to this time began in god and time will end in god remember bible says and i saw new jerusalem coming down and time will be no more genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning god created john 1 and 1 in the beginning was the word which beginning is beginning This is what we call digging deep in the scripture for four minutes. So how does this apply to his hour? Remember John 13:1 knowing his hour has come. How does it apply to the hour? Oh. Remember Jesus God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are three in one. If God is eternal, Jesus is eternal. That's the reason Jesus, what did we talk about last week? Humility. Meaning, oh God, please look at here. The one who dwell in eternity saw the man struggling in time. we seen sickness disease in poverty he said oops i got to give up that which is eternal and put on humble myself and become a god man eternal yet bound by time wow timeless no problem he gave up the glory the world became flesh dwell among us the eternal become submissive to the time on this earth for one reason and one reason only to redeem you who are struggling with this call time the eternal one humble himself left eternity came into time eternity there ain't no time time is here he said why i got to give up this to come be bound by time so now i'm bound by time but this time is controlled by him yes, 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 yes. eternity controls here and i cannot die or give up until my hour has come my hour come when he tell me declare this is your time yeah, yeah, yeah. is too much for yeah. 
My wife always tells me, how does all these things stay here? I don't know. It's just there. <laughs> Did you hear me? There is no hunger over there. But Bible say, he fasted 40 days and 40 died. Time, time, time. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He felt pain. He was asleep. He was tired. He would give up all to save a wretched like me bound by time. He gave up all that for you and you can't give, you, give up one Saturday to come to the choir. Well, you think you was going to go that free. He gave up all that and you can't get up and come to church on time. Or the Bible tells us, you're messing up my time. He gave up eternity. The joy being with the Father. All these things. Angels bow down and worship him. He came, he listened to me. He came up there so he can come. I'm going to give up my life. So you can worship me. But with your ignorance self. I ain't going to worship him. All he wants is my money. He gave up. Bible says he gave up all. Became poor in this time called. The time zone for you. So through his poverty. You can gain heaven. But you don't, you don't understand. You so wrapped up with this time. You so wrapped up with this earth. You so wrapped up with you. You don't even know the mystery. Call the hour has come. Oh, wow. In my entire life, 42 some years, I have never heard anybody preach. I said, if I don't, I'll be the best one. <laughs> the favorite son of the living God. He became human, came into time to rescue me so he can take me from this time into eternity. So when I die, time die, eternity just begun. And my question is this, don't die without him into eternity. 